What kind of results can you get for your business with Power BI in one month? You are about to watch members of our Power BI consultant program present their real Power BI projects. This is where we promise to help businesses get real results with Power BI in just about a month. You will see projects from across industries and all over the world. A community building organization in Ohio, an emergency medical assistance assistance provider in Kansas, a sustainable development company in Latin America, a tulip flower bulb company in Netherlands, and a housing investor operator in Utah. Now, if you need Power BI consulting help for your business, just go to our website, learnpowerbi.com, and click on consulting. We will also put a link in description. And if you are interested in learning Power BI or becoming a Power BI consultant, then check out the training page on our site, or follow the link in description. Make sure to watch the whole video so you can learn the lessons from each of these projects. Enjoy this recording and to join our future events live, just go to talkpowerbi.com. Um, all right, so I'm assuming you guys can, can hear us, can see us, can see the screen. Um, I guess on the, on the presenter side, let's do an audio test. I don't know, if, uh, yeah, let's just uh, go. A Andrew, uh, how are you yeah. doing today? Yeah, I'm doing well, Avi. Can hear you loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. You're coming through great. Ian, yep. how's Hello. your morning been? Very good. Nice. Did you get any gardening in this morning? <laughs> no, not yet. You you're saving it for later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Frisbee golf for later. <laughs> yeah. Frank, do you have a wine glass next to you? I know it's late for you. <laughs> <laughs> in Netherlands. <laughs> uh, not that late. It's six o'clock. So dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> not, not wine time. <laughs> okay. 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 Rakesh, how about you? Hi. Yes. Loud and clear. What's, uh, what's, what's the time in South Africa right now? It's uh, five to six. Oh, six all right. All right. Yeah, That's pretty to close to um, Frank's time zone. All right. So let's see. And uh, why don't I see Michael? Oh, there we go. Huh, Michael was here. I guess he would join again. All right, that's cool. So folks, uh, yeah, if you're joining, tell us uh, where you're joining us from. Oh, oops. don't want that. And maybe tell us a bit about like which industry do you work in? So we always say Power BI is a tool and the key is how do you leverage the tool? And yeah, so you use Power BI, who do you help? And of course here, you're gonna see a lots of interesting examples of who these folks are helping with Power BI. But we wanna hear from you. Okay, so we have Manoa. Uh, okay, okay, cool. So Manoa, we're gonna we're gonna make you a panelist so you can join the party. Let me find you. Actually, Robert, can you can you try that? Uh, like, I don't know what interface do you see? Do you see the attendees and see if you can find Manoa there? Uh, let me try that. Yes, I've seen Manoa. Let me see if I can make him a panelist as well. Yeah, yeah. And and if things are set up right, then you should be able to click more next to his name and say promote to panelist. That'd be a nice test. I only have the option of chatting with him. So I guess that's over your end. Ah, okay, okay. Hold on. So what if I say... Mm, I guess... That's okay. All right, so Manoa, we should have you on in a second. There we go. Let's see. Seems we're in mute, but we should have video from you, it seems. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Good. And we can see you. Yay. Hey. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Absolutely. Nice of you to join. Um, of course, I've heard uh, the stories from Frank, 
But yeah, glad to have you guys here to share it with the world. And and certainly it's it's yeah, it's a bonus to have you here. So that's great. I'm glad Frank pulled you in. Uh, all right, yeah. So hey, folks who are joining, let us know where you're joining us from and tell us a bit about which industry do you work in. And of course, you see here that we're going to have some really interesting presentations from um, across different industries from all over the world. <laughs> yeah, Ryan says hello to Rakesh. Hey, Rakesh, you got a shout out. Uh, Darren, he's saying he's from UK and he's, a he's focused on manufacturing. Just starting the BI journey, currently poor data completion means many data holes. But that's, I think that's great news. And I think a lot of speakers here would attest to it. I always say that Power BI is like shining a flashlight. I mean, until you do that, everybody has been living in the dark. And then you shine the flashlight, well, you see some rats running around. You know, so yeah, that's a good thing. It starts there. Connell is from Canada. She's in IT operations. Man Manchineni, Manchineni. Um, it's focused on asset management. Oh, that's great. And Joe from Atlanta, Georgia. Of course, that's where my brother lives and I plan to visit there soon. Um, I'm actually speaking at the Atlanta user group. Okay, so we're getting pretty close in the mark here. Oh, Osama is focused on social. Yuet is from Iowa. Reinventing myself as data analyst. More power to you, my friend. That's awesome. Paul, senior BI analyst, growing up at Green Bay, Wisconsin. That is great. So folks, you're probably seeing, uh, uh, seeing the slideshow here and I'll talk a little bit about that. So for two years, we have run uh, the Power BI Consultant Program. It took me one and a half years before that to muster up the courage to start offering that program. And of course I went through uh, a lot of fears that we all struggle with. And, you know, it's like, oh, who am I to do this? Am I good enough? Is it going to work out? What if it doesn't work out? What if it fails? What if these people blame me to throw rocks at me and show up at my doorstop with signs? Uh, none of that happened, <laughs> fortunately. And it's been incredible to watch their success. And not just that, but see the impact that they have been able to create in this world. And it's just been like a ripple flowing across. And I really feel that it's time to reinvent the workplace and it's time to reinvent work. And I was uh, thinking about work-life balance. And what came to me was we, we, we struggle so hard, right? I mean, like, you know, to, to work-life balance, it seems like you need to, you know, kind of, if you're working 60, 80 hours a week, you need to maybe reduce that to 40. Maybe it is about that, but I was thinking... What if we put more life in a work? Wouldn't that be awesome, right? I mean, what if work became play? What if work became this playground where we did what we loved, we created an impact, and we did it on our own terms? And of course, you can see some of the results for that. All right, so we're right on mark. So we're going to get started with our first presenter, Andrew. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let Andrew tell you their story. And again, thank you for everyone who's on. Uh, if I can find the stop sharing. <laughs> All right, Andrew, go ahead, share your screen. We're yep, ready and now. excited. Hello, all. Um, yeah, welcome to the um, Real Power BI project. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Andrew Ali. Um, I do help nonprofits, you know, making impacts in their communities. And and so I was really, really excited to work with this charity in, in the Cincinnati area. You know, they've got a vision to build um, a flourishing, diverse Jewish community for future generations. Um, and, and so it was really, you know, it's something that I talk in my heartstring and really I, it was more of a labor of love. That's how, 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 I'll, um, <laughs> how I'll term it. So, um, and so we go next to um, what the, the, the problem they faced. Um, oops, not sure why this is not moving. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, hold on there. I'm having a bit of a technical issue here. Have a, I'll do that again. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I am just 
see if that works again. Um, it works there like that. I mean, it, it, usually trying. for me, it works best if I share the whole screen. It seems you might be sharing a window. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just sharing the whole. So, sure. so let's try that again. Nope, still doesn't work. Um, so new share. Well, if the slide share mode isn't working, maybe just take us through in the other mode, whatever, whatever that mode is called. Okay, <laughs> okay um, let's see. Okay, um, okay, let me see if the other one's going to work now. Um, okay, share screen. see if that works all right folks hang on with us all right that's uh, that seems okay. good yeah all no, right sorry yeah. about that oh, yeah i can't it's for the slideshow isn't working so yeah <laughs> so um i'll um so you know the the, the guy the folks i work with the sales teams they were literally knocking their heads against the brick wall you know <laughs> i just put a picture out there you know they are on the front line in engaging with their donors to support the impact that they make in their communities you know the number one problem that we're facing is unlocking the insights that's hidden within their crm so you know they had a they you know they had a crm that was you know not fit for reporting purposes so they just exported to excel did the analysis there you know with lots of spreadsheets and you know including some some vbas yet yeah, they, they still couldn't get the insights they needed you know there was a lot of time that was spent on analyses and lots and there was not a lot of insights and and so it was it was a really difficult moment for them it was really you know it's you know they go into meetings with you know couldn't get much out of it you know going back with lots of you know, and, and, and I think the process was just really time consuming, time consuming um, and it was really quite difficult until we, we had a chat and um, I took them through um, a process. Um, so I um, I worked with them. We obviously through the process of um, bringing them into Power BI that they've, they've never used Power BI. They've always used, you know, literally from the CRM, you know, they just export to Excel. Um, so we used the agile approach it was it was a period over a four to five week period, you know, we iterated over some steps, you know, as this was their first step into Power BI, you know, the output from from this process was just going to um, serve like a proof of concept, um, you, know, as, you know, as well as to answer some of their immediate questions. You know, so we proceeded to, you know, connect, they, they use this um, as a specialty um, um, uh, CRM that was used for, um, for 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 charities and nonprofits, you know, so they they were able to connect to some data sets in Power BI, um, we were able to build some queries, you know, we built some relationships. Um, obviously, we built the measures, we built the metrics and and, and the dashboard. So we, we we went through a fairly, you know, you know, of all the things that is most important, let's focus on the top three things, and that's kind of what we, you know, that's almost like an introduction for them. Um, and, and so in the end, we, you know, were able to get in this, you know, able to do a very simple data model that showed clear relationships within their data and their lookup tables and which kind of reflected what their business processes looked like. Um, and so when, when we had that all done, we then created, um, uh, you know, a, a donor analysis overview for them. So this is like, just one of the reports we created for them, but I just want you to just hang on on that number there. You see, so that's not just a new donor figure, you know, you know, these are, these are real people, you know, who have, you know, they've made a decision to support the charity in achieving its objectives. You know, the, the lifeline, as you know, of every charity is, is your donor, is your donors, you know, you need the insights, you know, to effectively engage with them, you know, whether it's new, whether it's active, whether it's returning. So for instance, why, like this 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 charity for instance you know in, in terms of doing their marketing campaign you know you know rather than having a scattergun approach you know um they they, they they want to be able to understand you know why you know why their donors give up consistently over the last say for instance three years you know why somebody who has been giving for the last three years suddenly stopped giving you know what has changed how well you know are they able to connect and engage with their um, with their with their with their donor base and and with that knowledge help them to retain new donors so rather than just going around you know doing marketing campaigns is the insights 
they get from their existing donor base and then they can then use that to connect well with them and actually deliver on their objectives because remember i just although this you know this might look like a pretty nice dashboard but the reality of it is that the objective of this dashboard is to help them you know deliver the vision you know of building a flourishing diverse Jewish community for future generations. That's that's the main objectives. And you know, achieving that objective is the main goal. So being able to understand the business process, understanding the insights that every extra dollar they get means more lives are impacted. So for me, it's it was a real moment of truth. There was a moment of where the work we've done is actually delivering value on the ground. And I think being able to see that link for me as a professional in my in my life, this is this is me, you know, being able to add value to to lives. And I feel like so proud being part of this. Um, so yeah, so 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 and I'll go to some others. Like there are other we built, we went on, did some more iterations, built more metrics, built more measures to understand, you know, number of um, prior year open donors, so people that gave in the previous years, that have given again, you know, the current active donors. And, and I think using the Power BI tool gave us the insight to be able to do that. So with it, with, a, with a click of a button, they could switch the different views, they could see their, they could understand who their donors are, they could understand how the giving has changed, they could understand the profiles, you know, they could understand, you know, the what, where, when, how, of their engagement process, it was it was a real light bulb moment, and you know I think the question was well where where has this been all our all our lives, and you know so it's it it I think it was the value added to the customer, and I think I've I've been really proud to um to be be part of this process, you know so from you know from so this was just one of the um, reports we created for them, and we did some other bits for them, but I think it was this moment about touching lives and delivering on the objectives i think for me that was that was really the light bulb moment and and how it's impacted um and the charity so um i just have one 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 slide here and then you know this is um kind of like you know obviously in terms of the next steps you know the the charity they now have a very solid foundation to connect better with your stakeholders you know to um you know, to enable them achieve their charitable objectives, they are they feel more confident going into their campaign cycles. They feel more that you know the things because if you think about it, a lot of people that are giving to charity, a lot of us that are giving to charities, you know, we you know would love to do love the charity work, but it's just the time and being able to connect with an organization that can deliver what we can do. It's really quite key. It's a really important. It's a really important pillar of our society, and I think um, being able to you know, optimize them and help them to achieve those objectives is really, um, really what gets me up in the morning. And Power BI um, has has enable, enabled me um, to deliver that. So, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of um, <laughs> where where we are um, in terms of um, how I've managed to help this this client really. Um, so, um, I'm just a brief run through of what I've done. Um, and then in terms of next steps about me, um, you know, I, I grew up with faith in God and, you know, my life's been guided by that. And so my work is really focused on helping faith-based nonprofits, you know, make an impact in their community, you know, by locking that insight hidden within their data using mm -hmm. Power BI. So, you know, if, if you or somebody, you know, needs this help, you know, please feel free to contact me to see how I can help. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very quick run through, but I thought, um, yeah, I, I'll try to keep it not too technical, just um, yeah. just focus in terms of the values added to the customer, the values added to the charity, the fact that lives on the grounds are changed and things are happening. It really brings a real good warm to my heart. So, yeah, and so I'm, I'm living doing something that That's I really awesome. love to do most. That's awesome. But, so, Andrew, thanks so much for that. So, folks, you heard him, right? It's, it's you or somebody you know. And again, nonprofits and organizations like that, they're businesses too. And they have to manage all of that stuff, finance and so forth. But you, but it was so clear in, in, you know, when Andrew was speaking that he's so passionate about this. He passionately believes in this. So yeah, you or somebody you know who may need Andrew's help, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, actually, Andrew, uh, keep, keep that slide up for a while. Share it again, just so people have it. And uh, of course, folks, we'll follow up after this and we'll make sure you have uh, all of the LinkedIn profiles for all of our speakers as well.
but you can always get in touch with me and I can also connect. But, but of course, Andrew's information is here. So Andrew, just a few questions for you. One, it's incredible to hear about what you have been able to do with this line and so forth. But I want to, I want to, uh, you know, backtrack a bit and tell us a little bit about when you were starting out and did, did, did you, I mean, nobody knows the future, but what were, what were any doubts or fears in your mind as you were starting on this journey of leveraging Power BI to help uh, businesses and nonprofits, at, for example, the way you did? But what were your fears and doubts at the beginning of that journey? I think, I think the fear, my fear and doubt was initially, well, do I have the technical expertise to that? So I have, my background is, is an accountant and finance and all that and consultancy yeah. and advising and compliance. And I think questions like, I was a bit worried, you know, do I have the technical expertise to do it? And I found that I actually, I do, I think I just need that 20% of the, you know, just understanding the basics. So all you need yeah. for Power BI yeah. is the basics. And so even when I started this, I mean, it wasn't plain sailing. I, I hit a brick wall, but I, I had to I had to cycle back into, you know, I mean, Ian is probably on, probably, Ian probably know, I'm playing, you probably yeah. got some frantic calls from me, but you know, he, it was about that word keeps ringing in my ears out. You know, you got to start small. You got to start from the basic. Get the basics right. You know, yeah. and and even if you even if you're trying to get to a point, you're trying to get into these really complex tax measures. Never do complex tax measures. Start Lego. It's Lego Lego block approach. A B yeah. C D. You know, walk your way through. Yeah. Get the first one done. Get the second one done. You know, and it's fine because. You, you would not only understand it better, but you would actually be able to. You actually feel satisfied by it. So mm -hmm. I would say, don't worry, don't, 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 don't be worried about it. Yeah. You will face a brick wall, and that's fine. And within that brick wall, you've got a community to lean back on, and you would yeah. get to the next level because you you can't learn without getting hitting a brick wall, and you will face it, and that's fine. I mean. I'm sure Abby will probably tell you, even he probably hits brick wall, even though he's like the MVP. But, you know, but that's that's part of growth, isn't it? That's true. I most definitely do. Just different brick walls. But yeah, brick walls don't go away. And and part yeah. of the, and it sounds cliche, but yeah, I mean, you got to enjoy that journey. You got to enjoy that becoming. It was so frantic to get there. But um, yeah, you know, why not enjoy and appreciate what we have? So, Andrew, I want to ask you one, um, one other question, which is, and we haven't had a chance to talk about it, but but you mentioned briefly that your upbringing it, it was you are a man of faith, right? That's that's yeah. I think fair to say. Yeah. And I find it kind of stunning that the work that you're doing is so aligned with who you are and what your beliefs are and what you really care about and want to leave the footprint in this world. How does that feel that that your work is so aligned with with uh, who you are? It does feel really great, you see. I mean, I've cycled back. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I, I started life when I, obviously, my 20 odd years when I obviously come out of uni and all that, you know, started life as an accountant and all that. I still mm -hmm. going back to my roots because I, I remembered, obviously, you know, to going to church and all that sort of stuff and, you know, the mistakes I've made. I still find that that faith that I have has really helped me back and being able to, I, I just find myself being able to come back into this same line and being able to help it just it's like yeah. living your best life you really you know you're able to do the thing you really love most and you know that at the end of the day the work you've done is adding value you know to the, to the thing that means that one of them what the thing that means the most to you so wow. that's and so I'm just kind of focused on just that so yeah all right thank you so much so folks again if you or somebody you know could use the help of Andrew, then um, yeah, you've seen his presentation, let, let us know. Um, and you can get in touch with Andrew there. A Andrew, go ahead and uh, you can stop the screen share and we'll queue up our next speaker, Rakesh. So Rakesh, go ahead and Hello. share the screen. Okay, let me do that. Okay, tell me when you can see that. It seems coming up. Yep, we can see. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through my 
uh, presentation and tell you firstly a little bit about myself. Uh, so I uh, founded a company called BI Dashboards, which is uh, quite self-explanatory. And um, most of my experience um, has come from uh, operations, sales and customer services, spe specifically around contact centers and telecommunications. And I have a background as a data analyst, as well as a project manager. And um, my aim is to you know, be able to equip business leaders you know, with um, analytics that will ena enable them to make better informed decisions and ultimately uh, drive the bottom line. Okay, so this is, uh, let's just see if I can hide this portion here. Okay, this is um, uh, my real Power BI project that I work to it. Um, this is Kansas City's medicine cabinet um, and it was the executive director, her name's Beth. And they're actually a nonprofit um, organization uh, that uh, helps uh, people in the, med uh, people who can't afford basic medical care. And they were doing manual reports, uh, things like that. So I'll take you through that now. Okay, so firstly, um, when I first uh, had uh, the initial meeting with uh, Beth, um, she shared with me some of the um, problems that she was experiencing, you know, uh, and this was a, a raw file that uh, she had. And if you look at the bottom here, you can see I've highlighted it in yellow. These were all the different sheets on her Excel uh, document that she would copy and paste off a, um, SharePoint from a SharePoint location and should paste into Excel. And then each sheet had data like this. I've just blurred it out for sensitivity and sensitive information not to be shared there, but each sheet looked very similar. And at the bottom here, you'd see these little uh, summaries that she's created. And uh, she would, you know, take all that information and then from there, move it on, um, uh, move it onto a report page. So she would capture all the, um, summaries from each of the sheets and move it onto the very first tab here called a report tab. And this was obviously taking a lot of time because it was very inefficient. Um, she was spending multiple hours in a day to complete this uh, report and it was only being updated on a monthly basis. Uh, so throughout the month, they had no visibility and it was she was using this report to share it with um, uh, potential uh, people who would invest in or or fund, should I say, Kansas City's medicine cabinet. Uh, so she was looking for funding, things like that. And I just wanna to go to the next slide here. Uh, this is what the report page looked like. So this is all that work was being done to generate this report here. And you'll see 2021, we've got January, February, March, how many clients. So this is a subset of the data that I worked with. Um, it's not all of the information. And she's got client services. And then they broke down into the various um, services that they offer, which was dental, diabetic, uh, hearing aids, optical prescriptions, etc. cetera. Um, and ideally, what she wanted to do is to have this automated and just to take out that pain and that uh, mundaneness of performing this task once a month to have the report available. And people that she was sharing the report to weren't very uh, engaged in it because it was, you know, it was just numbers and it was hard to follow, things like that. Uh, so this is what we did. We, I set up a kickoff meeting or an initial, initial meeting with Beth and I decided, took her through, understood stood her pain points and then discussed how we're going to um, help Bit, you know, improve this uh, reporting or give her more um, reporting that she has more uh, functionality with. <clears throat> Um, I discuss, discussed an agile or a minimal viable product uh, approach. So every week, what we do is well, when we had our uh, weekly meetings, we would work on one thing and be able to deliver on that uh, item or deliverable. So I set up a SharePoint or a OneDrive location um, and she was able to drop all her raw files in there, which I was able to extract and then use that information to, to start working on her uh, Power BI dashboard. 
Okay, so what I did was from the uh, raw files, I brought all of this data into Power BI. So, um, and this, you could see here, there's a calendar here. Uh, this is uh, the agencies, the vendors, the client list, the vouchers, etc. And in each one of these uh, data sets, there was obviously um, cleaning involved and shaping of the data, that kind of stuff, getting it ready and prepped in to, for her to not have to every month do that uh, task you know, copying and pasting and downloading from SharePoint, all of that, because this was all being automated in the Power Query or Power Editor, Query Editor, sorry. I then uh, brought in all of this information into uh, Power BI's uh, modeling uh, pane. And this is where I connected the data. Basically, what happens here is, so um, we get the data to talk to, or we call these the tra transaction tables at the bottom, and we connect the dimension tables on top, and we get the data to talk to each another. So once the model is built, um, you know, then I can start giving her pure analytics around this uh, data set. And all of that heavy lifting is now done once and for all. So every month, Bet would just have to, um, you know, uh, those files, once they loaded, it was set up to automatically refresh her data. She wouldn't have to do anything. And then we've I've, uh, wrote some measures here, which kind of sits isolated from the entire data set. Okay. And this is uh, what we were able to do. So from the uh, Beth's objective here was to kind of replicate in Power BI what she was generating on that very first Excel spreadsheet, the report. And this is exactly what we're able to do here. And this enabled or gave her confidence in the report that I was producing for her because I was able to mimic exactly what she was seeing in terms of the numbers of clients and services, the uh, dollar values being spent at each uh, service, that kind of stuff. And one of the things that she wasn't able to do on Excel was quickly um, you know, compare what happened with the last year to this year. And we were able to do that as well on this very first page to just show her quickly, okay, for hearing aids, for example, in 2020, you spend $2,800 versus 2021, you know, you spend $700. So this is in essence what she ideally wanted. And uh, she's got the slice and dice facility here with choosing just a specific year or a specific month and year, having all of that capability, which you didn't really have in uh, Excel. And she was all also able to have this information whenever she, um, you know, on a daily basis in, compare, in comparison to having it available once a month. Okay, I then went further to give her more information. So from the data set, uh, previously, she, she didn't have this kind of um, drill downs uh, or it, 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 it didn't look, it was just too much of information for Excel. But in here, we were able to quickly uh, give her a uh, visual on how many males that are being um, helped or how many females. We were able to show her, um, you know, all the agencies that were um, providing these uh, vouchers and where these vouchers or these medicine, uh, these medical vouchers were being used at. So we could see Westport Eye Care um, had uh, X amounts uh, used at their um, outlet compared to, you know, um, who, who was being leased to. She, she didn't have this in a, in a quick glance like this. Um, we also put in... Um, the different race groups, you want to know, you know, who are they helping or what are the different race groups. So we were able to show her very quickly, you know, in March 2021, for example, you could see that um, white Caucasian had 43% of the vouchers issued to them. And on this page, we quickly, you know, we, we did a uh, year on year comparison based on agency. So she was able to see, you know, what we spent last year in 2020 versus 2021 um, on at each of the different agencies. Um, and she could do a comparison year quickly again on, um, you know, 2020 versus 2021 what they're spending, where they spend, which services are high, like we see optical year um, would $2,996 in 2020 compared to 2021 for the same period, uh, which was January, February, March, we see 
$5,712 spent. So this, you know, really helped Bet um, obviously take off that uh, manual task of uh, compiling this report, as well as now she has the um, ability to share this with the uh, possible funders, uh, you know, people who would uh, fund the Kansas City Medicine Cabinet, much more um, inviting visuals. And then lastly here, okay, just a little bit about me. So um, I, I basically help contact centers uh, because most of, most of my experience the last 20 years has been in contact centers, specifically around, I've worked in telecommunications contact centers and I help them improve their business processes, conversion rates, that kind of uh, stuff. And there's some information where I can be found on LinkedIn, um, I have a website as well uh, with a dummy dashboard, uh, well, not a dummy, a real dashboard that you can go and play around with. Um, and uh, that's just my email address for BI dashboards and a contact number. And yeah, I think that's, that's basically it in a nutshell. Hey? <laughs> All right. Hey, that was amazing. Okay. So there was, uh, so yeah, leave, leave that contact information up for people and okay. uh, we're also work king so so robert if you if you can let's put their links in the chat as well to all attendees so robert is gonna work on that so yeah so take us to the contact info great uh so rakesh something that really caught my attention was that when your client came to you they said they showed you that excel sheet and well, <laughs> kind of one of those monster Excel sheets that I know I've lived with, with lots of tabs and, you know, lots of formulas here and there. And, and we've all lived that. And, and of course, a lot of companies still live in that world. And that's OK. That's why we're here for it. Right. But mm -hmm. but what was striking to me was their ask. And they said, give me this right? because they said, yeah, give me this, but just take the pain away right? because it's a pain to maintain and update and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just give me this. And, and I've always wondered about that, that this ask versus need thing, right? So we know as professionals, you can say, that, oh, you need much more. You need to be, be able to graphically see things and slice and dice, but they don't see it yet but because they're stuck in the problem. So the ask is, is kind of different. It's very narrow in a way, right? But but that's, that's okay. I, I get that. But what I want to ask you about is, it seems you very gently led them through. So you didn't, so there's a saying that I heard, like, don't try to beat people on the head with data or visualizations or power BI. Right? And it just doesn't, yeah. So it seems like you were really nice with them as you held their hand and you gave them what they asked for, let them get comfortable with it, let them match the numbers and do the thing and do the bean counter. And they're like, yeah, it works, right? Gain their trust. And then you gently introduce all this stuff. I mean, was it? I mean, that to me is, is stunning. Is, is that, it, it, were you doing that intentionally or does it just intuitively you have a knack for working with people and just work that way? Tell me a bit about that. I saw a lot more when, uh, when I first uh, engaged with and what she wanted, you know, and she said, you know, these were some of the nice to have things. They weren't really important uh, at this point because she knew it was a, it was a time-based project, uh, you know, uh, with yeah. four to five weeks. And, um, you know, it was in the data set, um, all the information and having connected and built that model, it gave me quick access to be able to do that, you know, and that's the power of Power BI. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it was first, you know, gaining the trust, as you say, you know, like she gave me a subset with some numbers on a report and, you know, can I replicate those numbers? And once I replicated them, she I gained her trust and her confidence in what I was producing. And from there, I was able to suggest, okay, I can yeah. do it at a um, at a race level, at an agency level, at a vendor level. You can, yeah. you know, there, there was a whole lot of uh, other um, visuals that we could put together, which didn't take uh, that much of time, you know, because yeah. it, the data was uh, already clean shaped and the heavy lifting that she would have been doing in Excel to obtain that information was being automated in Power BI. Love it. And having Love that, it. yeah. And, and, and yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, Power BI does make it easy for us because yes. yeah, we, we can give them what they want, but then it's really easy to create other visualization layer on that. But folks, yeah, I think it's important as, as you saw on Rakesh too, it's 
you, you can't ignore the people aspect. If anything, it's, it's more important, maybe far more important than the tech aspect. And of course, Rakesh navigated that really well. Uh, so kind of a different question, Rakesh. So, um, th so the work that you're doing and helping companies and the impact you're about to create and the, this path you're on, uh, I, I know you're a family man. What does this mean to you in terms of your family? Like why, yeah, is this, is there, is there a connection between kind of your personal domain, right? Life, family, and now the work that you're doing and the direction you're going in? Yeah, so, you know, I've always, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned earlier, I've always been in operations and managing people and that kind of stuff. And uh, it, it was an interesting journey for me. You know, I got interested in uh, Forex, actually. And, and then I started learning how to build these Forex robots, robots mm -hmm. that can uh, automatically transact for you and stuff like that. And I never really pursued it. And then somehow... Uh, I was the guy who would subscribe to a car magazine and flip to the back of the pages, skip all the, the pictures and go to the back and I would read all the car stats. And it would just stick in my head and we'd be hanging around a braai or a barbecue um, and just chatting with friends and cars would come up and I knew all the stats, braking power, speed. And, and somehow, oh. you know, the dots just connected like, this is a passion. And I became the corner, uh, you know, in, at the office and I was working on Excel and just became frustrated with the limitations. And I started looking for something to, um, you know, improve on. And somebody mentioned to me, you should maybe check this out and power BI. And I, I, I looked into it and I immediately fell in love. And since then it's been like, you know, I, there's never a day that I'm, bored doing this it's like I, wow. I find myself like you know with a rubik's cube in my hand yeah constantly trying to solve and you're totally <laughs> engaged and and, yeah. and 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 that has improved my family life a lot because they've seen the the positive inside i'm so passionate about work and excited and you know what i do and how i help people and putting smiles on people's faces you know when oh wow you know it's like you can read what's in our heads and turn that into a visual it's like <laughs> oh. it's, it's just amazing yeah so i really yeah. enjoy it mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad your, your family, especially your kids, kind of get to see that side of you. I always say that kids never listen to us, right? I mean, they, yeah, so what we say doesn't matter, not, not as much as we would like. But man, they see us, right? They mm -hmm. see the life that we live. And I think that's the best thing we can do is lead, lead a life uh, by example. Uh, Rakesh, thank you so much. So folks, uh, uh, Robert has put his uh, LinkedIn information at least on there. And of course, from there, you can find his other details as well. And they're on the screen as well. So again, if you or somebody you know could use Rakesh's help, definitely reach out to them or at least follow Rakesh on LinkedIn. All right, Rakesh, go ahead and uh, stop your screen share. I'm going to switch to our next speaker, Michael. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me just share the application. Okay, perfect. Okay, hi, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Avgerinos and I am one of the founders of Datadocs uh, and I'm here to present my real Power BI project. I'd also like to uh, kind of give a quick shout out to my client who is on the call as well, uh, both Jesse and Eugenio. Uh, and my co-founder uh, tried to join earlier, but I had to run to another meeting. Um, but hello, everybody. So a little bit about my client. Um, our client is Fundación Avida, uh, and they are a globally recognized nonprofit, primarily based in the Latin American market. Um, right, the main effort, their mission statement is to work to drive collaborative processes that bring about uh, systemic changes in favor of human dignity and care for the planet. Um, they're very much so aligned with the UN's SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, and they have, they're starting to expand their footprint throughout uh, not just Latin America, but also some components of Europe, uh, as well as the United States. And here we have some facts and figures about Avena. So the Power BI side of things, right? What were some of the issues that were presented by the client that were submitted um, to us, right? So one of the main components that we saw here, uh, kind of the bulk of it was using a CRM for uh, data capture, right? 
Now for us, for our firm, we've dabbled in some CRMs before, but we've never been within the Dynamics uh, environment, right? So within this environment, you do have the option of pre-built reports. Um, however, for what the client wanted, it just didn't meet the demand. Uh, in addition, a few of the other issues that were presented were kind of team reporting accountability, right? So staying on top of metrics, the pace of projects and keeping data current, which I know so far, uh, Rakesh and, and Andrew were also talking about that, right? In terms of refresh, in terms of year over year variance, et cetera, right? Uh, time allocation, as we all know, right? Updating those manual spreadsheets takes time and that that's the bulk of it. It's not necessarily the calculations that's going on uh, in the back end, but more so, how much effort or time are we sinking into this initiative uh, instead of doing other perhaps more productive uh, analyses, right? Static reporting, of course, when you have uh, consistent or constant manipulation of these data files, they don't change automatically, they don't refresh automatically. You, the, the, the human, the individual <laughs> is the one who is doing the reporting, right? So every time a data figure changes, you are the one who has to update it. Uh, and of course, version control, right? As we've always said, um, all of the panelists, right? You do always kind of want to seek that that single source of truth, right? Uh, Tissot, as I've abbreviated here. Um, when you have those complex side Excel sheets uh, that are usually used to mitigate issues, you could end up creating more issues, right? Other users not knowing what version you're using, maybe it was lost in an email, maybe it wasn't on the OneDrive correctly, right? We've all we've all heard these stories. So these were some of the issues that were uh, presented by our client. Now for us, right? How did we approach this? We, we wanted to explore the data first. Uh, and this is where I think a lot of the panelists would agree is where you spend the bulk of, of your time, especially as a consultant, right? How do we understand what this looks like? Wait, are, are, are we walking into, into a door uh, in which we, we know nothing behind it, right? That can be scary for sure. Um, but I think that that's the first step and that's where you spend the most time to see, okay, if I see what's behind this door, I know how much work I'll have to do. I know how to allocate that accordingly, and I know what questions to ask the client, right? Because you're going into the situation without necessarily knowing the context or background. So the first thing that we wanna do is what are the overall business functions, right? So we had weekly meetings with uh, Eugenio and Jesse from Avina to learn what do they do, right? What, what's the backstory? Of course, also know about Jesse and Eugenio overall because they're people too, but in terms of their business, what, what do they do, right? What are they, what are they responsible for? The second thing that we wanted to note is we didn't want to rely on the pre-built CRM relationships. We wanted to start with a blank slate, right? Within the, uh, the Dynamics environment or any CRM truly, you will have custom built relationships, you will have standard relationships, et cetera. If you were to bring in that data into Power BI right away, you're then relying on someone else's logic or automated logic to kind of tell you what insight you want. And that's not always the case, right? In this case, our client wanted different insights that weren't provided by the reports. The third, uh, uh, kind of step or process that I have here is understanding the waterfall model for inherent relationships, right? So we worked together uh, with Eugenio uh, from Avina to see, okay, what are the true connections that actually exist here? What do we really need from uh, the different data tables to show uh, a final end product that meets the client's needs? Fourth, we were able to leverage a third-party open software tool called XRM Toolbox to streamline table creation. And I'll go into more detail of this later. And our last step, of course, what we wanted to keep in mind is that our client does have previous experience with Power BI, right? Now, this was helpful for, for a multitude of reasons. One, in terms of user experience, user interface, okay? So, so everyone's on board, as opposed to you know some panelists that you'll hear from today. Their client may not have exposure to Power BI and, and, and we're all Power BI evangelists and we're saying, this is a great product to use. Can we help you use it, right? But in this case, they've used Power BI uh, before. And we were able to go into their tenant with a Pro Plus license and work with them directly within the Power BI service, which is fantastic. So some of our solutions, right? Of course, we wanna use Power BI to tell a story. And, and that's kind of what we're all presenting on today. How do we tell the story? How do we have data tell the story to the end user, right? To simplify the information, uh, kind of quickly convey key points, especially on the fly, and you, you always want to make sure that your story has a beginning and an end, right? And that's what you should see in a dashboard. And that's our philosophy at Datadocs, right? Microsoft Teams. Now, this is kind of a curveball, but it was fantastic, right? Uh, so we were invited to use the Microsoft Teams tenant of our client, which was great for communication, for regular meetings, uh, as well as for, for time tracking to know okay, how, how much effort did this actually take overall, right? To get a better idea of, of what works and what doesn't. Additionally, 
as, as many may know, um, there is an embed option within Microsoft Teams so that you can actually see any uh, published report on the PowerBI.com service. XRM Toolbox, which I mentioned before, third-party open software tool to recognize what's called option sets in the CRM, right? So just kind of a very broad overview. Uh, an option set is where, let's say you have five numbers, they're all unique codes and they all mean different things, right? One through three, one can mean um, active, two can mean pending, three can, can mean expired or overdue, right? But we don't know that when looking at the data necessarily, and it's tough to match those, those kind of figures and IDs together. Uh, a CRM environment. So for us, again, we, we were lucky. This is, this is great. This made uh, many things easier. We had a QA environment. So what that means is we were able to have a copy of the data that the business uses uh, without it being in production. So all the end users are still using what's called the production version, whereas uh, my firm is using the, the QA version. So any kind of issues or if we blow it up or anything like that, we're not, we're not you know, destroying business processes that are necessary for a daily basis. Uh, and we can kind of move around in that environment without too much issue. And of course, lastly, as, as we're all talking about, right, automation of insights. At all data that's loaded into the CRM uh, from now until forever uh, will be refreshed into PBI daily, right? This decreases time spent for all business users that may have to manually repivot the data, reformat the data, et cetera, right? This way on a month to month basis, when our client uh, either receives what, what we're calling investment money, all of our facts and figures, all of our visualizations, et cetera, will be updated along with the refresh. So some of our timeline goals, um, myself, me and, and, and my co-founder uh, like to work on timelines. That's, that's something that we love to do because it keeps both of us accountable. And of course, um, our, our client was, was very happy to, to do that with us, to be a part of that journey with us to say, okay, I, I think this is plausible. Do you think this is too much? This is probably out of scope, et cetera, right? So uh, to your left here, you can see the month of May, uh, which is when really the, the, the true bulk of the project started. We had data exploration, et cetera. Uh, we we're looking at the CRM and we completed our own mockups, both us and, and the client, which was extremely helpful too, because we could say, okay, you know, with, without biasing the conversation, right, can the, my, my co-founder and I create a mockup from our idea, from our conversation that we've had with the client? And can the client also come up with something? And is the end product the same? What's different? Did we interpret something differently? Oh, we're on the same page. Cool, right? So, so this is a good way to have that conversation, to be on the same page and to move forward together. Okay, the second point here, slicers and cards, a summary page, right? This is where we started to kind of create all of our active visuals with our client, uh, specifically to have a high level overview that could be provided to multiple business users, could be provided to the CFO of the company, uh, et cetera, right? Drill through. Now this is where more of the detail comes into play, um, right? Where we wanted to see, okay, out of this X sum, that's comprised of why different entities, uh, would an individual want to go in and see that? Of course, right? And who would that individual be? Doesn't matter at that point, but they need to be able to see the detail. So again, we started high and then we went into more detail accordingly based off of the client need. So today we actually, uh, well, a few days ago, uh, we'd finished a tree map visual and we created a dynamic button on the summary page. Uh, as well as a full stack bar chart to show overall kind of annual budgets, if you will. Um, and, and I think it looks great. It's fantastic so far, and, and we're waiting to receive feedback from the CFO of the company. Now in the future here, which is uh, kind of number five and number six, you'll see in, in, in slight yellow text here, uh, we have um, other views that we're looking at uh, known as POA and Inversiones, and our second deliverable uh, for, for the uh, Real Power BI submission, which was um, kind of looking at different components that are still in the CRM that we haven't really touched yet, as well as the kind of accounting component of their dynamic system. Now, before I go any further, I also want to highlight that uh, my firm does speak two different languages. Uh, we speak uh, Greek and, and Russian, um, but Spanish is not one of our strong suits. So that was another kind of curveball for us, but it was a good challenge. It wasn't a curveball as in we didn't know, right? But it was a great challenge for us because we said, you know what? If data tells the story, it doesn't matter what language it's in, right? You need to be able to tell the story to what the client wants and fit the business need. And you can do that regardless of the language if you understand the data itself. So <laughs> here are some of our mockups, some more professional looking than others, of course. Um, but 
it doesn't matter really what the mock-up looks like, right? Because you need to get the general idea across when you're start, starting to build out the relationships, um, which I think so far, right, uh, a Andrew and Rakesh touched on perfectly, right? Really making sure that when you're setting up that relationship model, that it makes sense, that what you want as a dimension table is different from your fact table, et cetera, right? So on the upper part here, you can see this is, we were starting to think of what do we want some of the reports to look like? And of course, due, due to um, an NDA that we signed, this is why I'm also not showing some of our full dashboard yet. But of course, if you're interested, we can always show a different mock-up of, of what we've done for, for other clients as well. But at the top here, you can see some of the visuals that we've created, right? So kind of budget to variance, what, what, what have we received overall uh, across different uh, number of years? Um, one thing that was a common uh, topic is how many days until something is due, right? So that's the donor chart, 30, 60, 90, and what's overdue and making that dynamic to see, okay, this component of the business has the most overdue reports, et cetera. Okay, on your bottom left here and on the bottom right, you'll see what we were talking about in terms of relationships, right? This is, this is pretty, it could get pretty hairy, right? I mean, th there's a lot that's going on here. And again, it's in another language, right? And, and on top of that, we, we have, our firm has a background of over 20 years of grants financial uh, management, especially when it comes to nonprofits and particularly within the healthcare sector. But we wanted to, again, make sure that we're not necessarily translating directly from Spanish to English and saying, oh, this is what this means by investment, because it may not be, right? It may be a completely different process, which is why it's extremely important to map out um, these kinds of things with, with your client. Here is the relationship table, right? So this was relatively complex. Um, we had a lot of data tables that we pulled in, uh, a lot of cleaning up within Power Query because we wanted to make sure that what we're bringing in from the CRM uh, is, is not unnecessary, but it's only what is truly necessary, right? We wanna make sure that this model is still agile, right? Agile BI, as Avi always says, that's, that's the key to moving forward to being able to deploy a sustainable solution for a business, right? And on the right-hand side, you can see uh, what, what we're calling here is the gap tables. Not to go into too much detail, right? But what the CRM itself captures is, is what are called option sets. These option sets are values only and they're not actual labels, right? So to circumvent this, this is where the XRM toolbox came into play, right? So what it does is you can pretty much have all the entities of the option sets recognized. And then we selected certain tables that we were looking to quote unquote translate and import that data set into Power BI. Right, and option sets all codes and equivalent values are generated, multiple copies of the same table are created and pasted into individual queries. Right, so these specific, um, these queries were then filtered for a specific entity schema that's needed for a crosswalk, right? So this is your kind of super modern day CRM based VLOOKUP, if you will, right? Of course, everything comes with challenges, right? Um, for, for us, uh, and, and for our client in, in, some, in some cases too, right? In this case, 2015 CRM migration, right? So they, they shifted, our client shifted to using uh, Dynamics as of 2015, but right, data did exist before 2015. Uh, the organization was founded before 2015 and had uh, grant data before then. So how reliable is that data, right? That's one component. Second component, as I mentioned before, is the foreign language component. Right? We enjoyed expanding our grant management Spanish, Spanish vocabulary, even though Spanish is not our firm's primary or secondary language. And again, completing that challenge confirmed how powerful data storytelling can be. Again, right? it could be tough, kind of what Andrew was talking about, just like running into that wall. But how do you get around that wall? You don't have to go through it. How do you get around it? For us, right, brushing up on our Spanish, of course, but also understanding the data uh, from a data-centric perspective instead of just saying, it's in another language. Oh my gosh, I can't do it. Right, and kind of moving forward in that way. Uh, another challenge that, that the client and I spoke about were current and upcoming culture change, right? Rolling out these reports usually causes some sort of culture shift across the organization uh, regarding financial reporting and accountability. And so how do you ensure that, you know, you, do you slowly bring everybody on board? Are there certain areas of the business that you wanna bring on board first, et cetera? Uh, as I mentioned before, not relying upon inherent CRM data table relationships, right? S start from scratch, blank slate, always, 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 always. Um, I think if we did not do that, we would still be trying to uh, create a data model for sure. Uh, and lastly, naming convention, custom fields versus inherent fields. Um, custom fields, which could be super helpful for, for many different firms, uh, were created by our client in their CRM specifically to meet their business needs. Great. 
However, at times these custom fields did coincide with similar sounding fields that are inherent to the standard columns of the standard CRM package. So again, kind of keeping track of, uh, of your naming conventions. I know uh, within Avi's program, he said that multiple times, right? Is it easier to rename the column now? Probably. Is it something that you're going to remember? Yes, right? Uh, and, and, and making sure that you're, that you're kind of documenting that accordingly. Uh, and this is us. This is uh, myself and the co-founder, Dimitri Tuchin. Uh, and you can find our, our bios uh, within the LinkedIn uh, links below. Terrific. And, uh, and Robert is going to post, um, trying to post that LinkedIn link as you were. So, hey, um, I wanted to bring Jesse online. I, of course, uh, she's famous now because Michael has made her famous. Uh, <laughs> Jesse, let's see if we can hear you. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. So, <laughs> well, you guys went through a really powerful experience, but what I want to ask you, what I would love to hear from you is this. So my, my, my heart always goes out to what I call the frontline troops, right? So these are the business users who are kind of in the trenches and they don't have everything available to them and, and they just have to get by. And I feel for them because I was one of them, right? And, and it was so hard to kind of cobble together the reports and all this stuff. And it was frustrating because it wasn't even your day job. My day job was something else. And on the side, I was spending so much time on all these reports. And in the end, it just felt like a house of cards and so many problems. There. So what I would like to hear from you is that the work that you've already done uh, with Michael and, and the path that you're on do you do you see changes already in the day-to-day -day life of that frontline troop? Maybe that's you, maybe that's your team. And, and not just in terms of the things they do, but how do they feel, right? I mean, are, are they, do they feel more optimistic, less frustrated? Um, yeah, tell me, tell me a bit about that. Um, so we, we're still presenting to, we have to present to the CFO, but I can definitely speak for myself since I am one of the people doing those ridiculously inefficient <laughs> monthly reports. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, this is great. It's, um, it, for me, the, the best part was the, con the direct connection to the CRM is mm -hmm. incredible. Um, so for me, that was the best part, but an additional benefit, which I didn't think would happen ahead of time is how much this has put. I've been able to look at our own business model objectively. So I've been able to kind of see, oh, this doesn't work. And it's problems that I knew existed, but when I see them or when I realize I can't have the table I want because the data is not there, um, it's a whole wow. different level. And so I think in terms of moving our business forward and, and cultural shifts, it's, it's gonna be great. Oh, love it. Yeah, we were talking earlier how Power BI is kind of shining a torchlight, and sometimes you don't like the things you see, but that gives you an opportunity to kind of fix them. So that's that's great. Uh, Michael, I want to hear a little bit more from you. Uh, tell us about Data Docs. What is your mission and who do you help? Who do you serve? So our, our main clients so far and who, who we've served because of our background uh, is nonprofits and, and nonprofits specifically within the healthcare space. Um, so both Demetri and I come from a heavy, heavy healthcare background, uh, which at least in the state of New York where we're based, uh, mm -hmm. all has to be nonprofit, right? There are no for-profit hospitals typically in the Northeast at all. Mm -hmm. um, so many kind of nonprofit methodologies fall under the same uh, kind of guide, guise as, as a hospital here as well. Um, but that's who we aim to serve. And, and so far, we've, we've kind of branched out into uh, smaller uh, to medium-sized businesses that are focused within the healthcare space, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of, of tax status, um, because at the end of the day, our main clients have been doctors, uh, mm -hmm. as well as nurses and other healthcare personnel. Um, of course, you know, we, we, we've always kind of resonated with, with Jesse because um, <laughs> I am on a team within uh, a larger organization with Dimitri where we were doing a lot of those manual reports and this is kind of how it all started, right? Uh, where we said, that's, that's enough. Thank you. Please no more. Uh, yeah. let's, let's automate this, right? Why, why are we spending so much time doing this? Why is there, why is there a meeting to talk about the report that was, that has no version control whatsoever? Yeah. Uh, why do that? Right? So we decided to roll that out within our own uh, okay. organization where, where we, we are employed. Uh, and then we said, Hey, this, is a pretty good idea. I think that we can make a run uh, with this mm -hmm. uh, whole plan and, and kind of bring data streamlining to uh, 
nonprofits overall, but also within the healthcare space. And typically healthcare and financial services for, for those of you um, who may not be in the US, those are typically what we call the, the dinosaur industries of data, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh, you're still using VBA and, and there's two people that maybe know how to do that whole report. Uh -huh. So what happens when they leave? Right or other questions that come up uh, of that of that nature, but it's always it's an area that's very ripe uh, for this type of uh, of work, uh, especially when it's the what we call the non clinical side. Right, all the clinical yeah. innovation in the world, the new cyber knives or anything related to healthcare advancement, cool, but that's a tool. How do we look at the data that's either generated by that tool or right just overall uh, administrative uh, back end processes, right? Grant management, for instance. Love it. Hey, I think you, you, you touched one of my nerves when you brought a VBA and you might have ruffled some other feathers on the board. Ouch. But, uh, but yeah, I want to thank both Jesse and Michael uh, for the incredible work that they did. And they make, well, you guys are helping me serve my mission. If folks don't know my mission, it's, well, the top line at least reads, be the thread that connects and empowers others. So, of course, I, I really can't fulfill my mission without people like Michael and uh, Jesse. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, let's we'll move on to our next exciting speaker, uh, Frank. Hello, Avi. I'm gonna share your screen, yep. Yeah, I will share my screen. Let's test it or you see, uh, you see my uh, presentation now? We do, yes. Yes, now I will try to slide to another slide. Yeah, also, yeah, it's working, okay. Okay, first, um, first of all, something about, uh, uh, about me, so you know who is uh, talking to you. Um, I live in the Netherlands. Um, I have uh, a wife and uh, kids, so that's my foundation at home. Uh, I like to bicycle. Um, I have a uh, finance uh, uh, and a healthcare uh, background, so I relate to uh, Michael and uh, to uh, uh, Andrew, like uh, finance and uh, accounting. I'm a CPA, um, not um, in business, not uh, public, but uh, in business, you call that. So I'm working in a hospital now, um, and uh, I just uh, quit uh, to be fully uh, a Power BI consultant. So that's my new, uh, new, new job. I'm a Pro Plus member since uh, February 2020, and uh, I thought it was time to present something in the real Power BI uh, <laughs> project. Um, who do I serve? Um, I mainly serve people, so uh, Power BI is a tool, but I serve finance people, uh, like uh, Manu, my client, is also here, and uh, thank you, you joined, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the people I'm uh, target, and I hope I can uh, teach him something, and we can make a, a nice dashboard for him. Um, my specialty is healthcare, so finance and healthcare, that's my specialty, but finance in uh, global is uh, also something uh, I do, and on the right, you see some yeah, uh, some dashboard already I built and in the hospital, you see the data structure. So that's uh, uh, like Michael said, there are many tools and uh, in the hospital, we have also NiVision. So I'm uh, also uh, acquainted with uh, <laughs> the NiVision databases. Okay, let's go further. Let's go to the client. Um, well, so like I said, uh, Manu, uh, thank you that you are here. Uh, we uh, connected uh, through all the people out of the world, uh, there was a, a project from Holland and also a tube. So yeah, that, that <laughs> related to me because I'm also from the Netherlands. So yeah, so we connected and we can speak Dutch. Uh, now I'm speaking English, but Dutch is, uh, is uh, my native language. Um, something about the client and the project. Uh, it's a historical um, uh, family. They produce uh, like 115 million uh, tubes. If you want to add something, Emmanuel, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, uh, add something. Um, they have different colors. So uh, the flowers are uh, in all kinds of colors. Um, they also do growing the tubes, but they are also forcing. So that's a specific, specific uh, um, uh, uh, not growing, but you can force to make it a flower. And um, he has a small, uh, finance team. So it is, uh, of course, the main production is the, the flowers and a small uh, head uh, uh, overhead side. If we go to the client challenge, um, well, he already got something in Excel. So um, 
it's not Excel hell he had. He had uh, some, ex um, yeah, some good Excel examples. So yeah, he just wanted to make the next step to make something more, not only about finance, but also join some production related items and do uh, also see the labor, uh, how many hours I worked. They have a re registration system. They just um, uh, register all the activity of all employees. So they can see which part of the production um, costs how many hours. And yeah, so that we dive into in this, uh, uh, in this project. Um, he had already some Excel files um, and he wants to have uh, a financial report also with some year to date and some forecast and budget. Well, the budget we, it was on other aggregation and other category system. So it was more a cash flow and not really a budget. So that's something we're going to do in the future. But uh, we tried it and um, it was a fun journey. Um, let's go to the end result. This is uh, uh, the current end result. Uh, we have made an uh, executive uh, summary. And in this just, uh, yeah, I called it, if you do the Power BI, you can keep it so basic uh, as, as necessary because um, it's all about the information you show. So not about the, the, all the, the fancy stuff. It's just about some highlighted, just quick for the, for the, uh, for the directors and for the finance. So on the left, you see the actuals uh, from year to date and the actuals from the uh, 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 comparison. Then you have the revenue and the costs. And then you can see uh, on the right, just a breakdown of the revenue uh, against last year, the comparison and also the costs. And then from the bottom, you can see that the revenue is how many plants, how many tubes are picked and uh, are planted. So you see some correlation between the revenue and your um, production. And on the right corner, you see the relation between your labor costs and your hours. So that's in one, one shot, you can see ov overall how are you are doing and uh, is it in line with uh, last year or do something better. It is a seasonal product. So um, they had a fiscal year <laughs> that made it some, uh, some challenges, but it was also in the, it started just with Avis and the ultimate table and tweaked it a little bit. So you can uh, make a, a, a nice uh, fiscal table. Um, something about the process. We did our first meeting and we discussed the needs. So, uh, we discussed, is it a click? Uh, is it a match? Um, then uh, it's good to sign uh, agreements. Uh, we didn't sign an NDA, we signed a, a Dutch uh, agreement. Uh, and um, we shared our um, Excel files like I always saw in presentation of our guests in a OneDrive. Yeah, so you can do that safely. Uh, then we did a weekly a Zoom meeting. So we went to the project, so by step by step. And um, I did some extra with video recording because Maniwa uh, is also, and that's very good, uh, want to teach uh, Power BI in a, uh, a deeper manner. So he can, uh, he can ma maintain and also build himself in the future. So yeah, we just made a record, a uh, video record of some pieces of the uh, project. And in the future, I think uh, we make some extra videos. Um, we already connected with the financial system. So uh, the desktop was connected with the bookkeeping system. I let, we uh, decided to do that for a later stadium. So um, we planned it not to do it with this project of eight weeks, but just a park it and uh, in the next step to um, uh, exchange the Excel files with, uh, with the bookkeeping system. And also, like I said, it's uh, people first and then the tech. Now you see some pictures, how it's uh, look like. Um, then the data model, it's a simple uh, uh, rules. We just uh, related one to many. Uh, on the top, we had a PNL and we had two, and that is uh, common in um, finance. You have two uh, chart of accounts. So sometimes you have internally, you on other uh, categories than externally. So uh, one is the management information and one is the uh, reporting. So uh, we had both in the system. You can, uh, it's just uh, two different kind of categories. 
uh, we used the organization structure, calendar, some measure tables, and on the bottom, we just uh, had the, the fact tables and created uh, one too many, uh, um, one too many rations. Um, well, one of the demands was that he can drill down to a lower level, but you can don't have to always to drill down. Uh, you can also make a tooltip. Okay? You can also make something to mark up. So that's very easy to do in Power BI. You can just make uh, a small um, uh, tooltip page and you can reference uh, uh, if you hover over it. So that's just for the showing how you can do that uh, uh, to put in the picture. And then you can have, uh, oh, what's uh, behind it? You can have a snell snap shot and then you, oh yeah, okay, that's the costs that are, uh, um, how do you say that? That are the, co the biggest costs at the moment that are making uh, the higher or the low uh, bubble. Um, this is the production. So um, Manuwa and I, we went further uh, uh, from the finance to some more detail about the labor and uh, the tubes. So we made some total productivity on the bottom and uh, also some um, hours and activities. So you can see, okay, how many hours are, are there spended, but also how many activities are in that um, in that month, yeah, so that's a breakdown. Further, we had because we are finance people. Yeah, <laughs> um, I had to discuss with with Manuel the first time. Uh, we don't want to on the top uh, a guard. I don't know how you say that in um, is the dashboard. Uh, the 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 dashboard. How do you call that? Gosh. Uh, yeah, the this you know like the car dash, right? Yeah, Which yeah. is a speed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Manu will want them, but I said uh, if I do that, I get a whole panel all over me. So I don't did it because it's uh, I did it to a, a scorecard. But um, what we did uh, was uh, just a simple table because finance people love to have a table with some uh, uh, down drilling and. Uh, yeah, the visuals are for the people of the management, but the uh, finance people also want to have to down drill to the transactions. So that we made just a PL with some trends and then a simple down drill. So you can see work bookings, work transactions are beneath, beneath the, uh, the number you are just uh, down drilling on. And uh, also you can then specify by each month. So you can down drill, so you can also see the bookings. Oh, what's what's happening in this month? So it's more for the analyze the tool. Right? The first page is more for the, the, the clear management review and uh, discussion. And this is more for the analyze for the financial people to make some, okay, what's behind it? Yeah, some to make uh, an analyze. Um, yeah, uh, that's was in small, the project um, we are, just uh, decided that we want to move further and uh, replace the downloads with the SQL uh, connection, already uh, set that. And uh, yeah, some next steps are publishing to the Power BI service. So the users also can use it. Huh? The desktop is also for the garage, is also for the builders, but for the directors, you can use uh, Power BI service. And um, we are also discussing maybe to connect to the inventory system and um, yeah, also, main target is to learn, teach the client to, yeah, to, to get on the journey of Power BI and uh, yeah, to be uh, on your own and uh, be um, capable to do the uh, self-service and some building uh, themselves. I don't know if Manuel has something to add to this uh, to this uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, actually, Manuel, if if I can, well, first of all, thank you for you know partnering with Frank. And actually, that's what I would like to ask, ask about. It's clear uh, from Frank's presentation that both of you work really closely together. And I think that that frankly is seeming like a sign, which we've seen in other presentations as well, is that, yeah, that relationship is key. But I'm really curious, what was it originally that inspired you to get started in this direction to begin with? Yeah, I think it was said before, but um like every month you need to, you feel the pressure to, to report. Uh, basically for me, the reporting is always uh, uh, like say 
yeah, gives me closure, so to say, <laughs> of yeah. what happened during that month or even during the year. And like Frank said, we have a we have a short season. We start uh, growing in, in in November, December, and it already ends in June. So mm. it's really yeah quick. So that pressure was really on. And um, I started at this company almost three years ago. Um, a lot of fun. I, I do this work. I only work three days uh, a week. Nice. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, really uh, a choice of my own family related. That's um, great. So in only three days a week and then all the pressure on it, that, that month end reporting was really uh, something, uh, well, it was a heavy weight on my shoulder, so to say. Wow. I want to have, I really wanted to make this uh yeah, lean and mean and, and have a uh, an, an easy to understand dashboard yeah. for the for the board and um, yeah so I I tried it myself a year ago I started I, I looked at your website and the, I watched the tutorials mm -hmm. and I got as far as uh, only year to date so but not yeah. in comparison with previous year and uh, yeah. also I want to forecast in it so I cried out for help. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and that's that's great, right? I mean, I remember one of uh, one of the uh, uh, earlier project members. What they said was, "We did more in eight hours than I could have done by myself in eighty. Yeah. Right? So yeah. so yeah, it, it does help to get help. Um, but do you do you do you see the light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, do you see yeah, so sure course, do. That, yeah. that a world where hopefully you're not scrambling and things no. things are yeah. <laughs> uh, running more really, smoothly? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to to finalize it all. I actually did a presentation this morning with my uh, with uh, the founder of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, we sat together and I showed him the dashboard, and uh, yeah, he was really excited and enthusiastic about it. So we, we agreed to to follow up and uh, and, and yeah, to finalize it. We yeah. actually have another uh, we have another uh, company uh, which we want to use this uh, as a basic for uh, yeah wow. to extend it. And yep. well, there's more to come. Yep. Oh, that's, yep. that's, that's great. That's great. It, yeah, it's, a, it, it's certainly a journey. I mean, I always say Power yep. BI is not a magic wand, but it, it's such a rewarding journey. And th that's what I like about it. It's not like the old school BI projects where you spent millions of dollars, waited six months to a year, and then frankly, they, they never delivered <laughs> in the promises anyway, right? I mean, you, yeah. you work for a month and you can see the results and then you go from yeah. there. So that's great. Hey, thank you so much for partnering with Frank on that. So Frank, I have a question for you. So I know, um, and, and Michael talked about the same thing, and I know you were in the same situation where you were doing finance and healthcare for the company you're working for. And then there's this moment where you go, ah, you know, maybe I can help others. And you did, and you've helped so many different companies. I just want to ask about what has that experience been like and what has that meant for you? Well, it's, um, I, I, I um, in the past, I was an auditor and then you saw all kinds of companies. And that was a very exciting uh, time because then you can cross Cross, see uh, different um, uh, structures, and you can build on it. And so it's very um, rewarding to um, to get that knowledge. And that was also with the Power BI. First, you did a d deep dive in uh, our hospital. Oh, I was the pioneer of the in two mm -hmm. three years ago. Where we built the total hospital of Power BI, and it's very nice to have that experience. And then. To make uh, other uh, healthcare companies uh, and also finance, so like uh, Manuel, just just the finance part, uh, to make them yeah have some uh, joy, and that's yeah. something I, in a managerial, the, the sometimes the fun is otherwise than the the fun of just um, yeah. building something and uh, to make uh, yeah that how do you say that so that made me made me happy to see other people uh, yeah also be excited about the tool and about the information yeah 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 thank you so much both frank and uh Manuel. and uh i just want to call out frank ended on a beautiful note so um and i was thinking back to when he was introducing himself and and folks who know me know that i talk all about niching down is like guys get really targeted and tell us who you serve and and <laughs> He did the opposite, but I loved it because it's so genuine, so frank. And he said, I serve people, right? And, and, 
And I love that. And let's not ever forget that. And I, I do think it's about people. The more I've gotten in tech, it's more about people. Yes, they're in finance. And yes, they're having these struggles. And yes, Frank is, you know, obviously a niche down there and so forth. But yeah, let's, you know, that was a good reminder for me and everybody else that, yeah, it's, you know, it's just the people. So thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Manoa. All right, let's go to our next speaker, Ian Bowman, the Far BI wingman. I'm excited about this one. All right, Frank, uh, perfect. Ian, go ahead and share your screen. And unmute yourself. And we should be good to go. All right. I there we go. It. Yeah, lift off. Move that guy out of the way there. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, slide. Okay. I'm Ian Bowman. Uh, I call myself a data analytics wingman. A little more on that in a second. I help generally help uh, construction property leaders use data, and generally it's to do something to do with growth. Uh, they're after some audacious growth. They're trying to grow more profitably, something like that. So, an example, um, you know, looking at profitability across a portfolio of hundreds of projects going on at the same time, um, and keeping them up to date on a daily basis or looking at what's working from a marketing perspective and what's not, and trying to do more of what is working and less of what's not, of course, right? And you can check out my LinkedIn and that'll come back up at the end. So Wingman, I guess the way I think about it is that I'm kind of side by side with leaders who are trying to choose problems that data can help them solve, right? And I look at Power BI as one very good tool, but just a tool still. It's not the goal in itself. The dashboard is not the goal in itself, for example, right? What we're trying to figure out is how can we impact this business, the trajectory of it, um, the mission, whatever it is, right? So sometimes it happens that Power BI is not the, fit, the best fit for a given problem, right? And, uh, and it's funny because I think we go through this stage, I know I did, where after I got my first glimpse of Power BI and I was like, whoa, this is mind blowing you know, unpivoting data and things like that. The steps in Power Query was what did it for me. And then there's kind of this next step, which is now you know this is possible and everything you look at, you kind of have this, oh, I've got this hammer. Is that a nail? Is that a nail, right? And so I think there's kind of a natural progression through that. Um, and one of the, and because not everything is a fit for Power BI, I think there's a an approach early on, which is this very fast prototyping and conversations around the prototype that helps you figure it out with low effort and uh, and quickly. So safe to fail kind of experiments. So uh, this really uh, basically buys and operates um, student housing, not on campus, but very near campus. And so their business model is to buy something that's maybe underperforming, fix it up, give it some new amenities, and then um, you know, and then be able to rent it out for more, make it more profitable and and, uh, and grow. And so their challenge was, okay, we've got these few markets that we know, we want to move into more markets so that we can grow faster, right? And and do that well. And, but we don't know those markets as well. We don't know the, the properties that are there. And we'd, so we'd like to basically double what we're doing, okay? And so that's that's good. That's a pretty strategic growth kind of oriented problem. That's one of the things I like. It's niche enough. Good. Um, so we started down this path and uh, overall, this whole thing took about three hours of development time and about six hours of discussion. So it wasn't a heavy investment. It was kind of mainly about getting to know each other and understanding the space and doing a little bit of prototyping and then understanding it a little bit better. Ultimately, we decided that Power BI wasn't the best fit for this, and that's okay. That happens, right? Uh, quick look at the data model. You can see it's pretty basic, right? We've got the properties, and then we've got some of the performance metrics, and then we've you know done the measures so that we can drag them on really easily. Uh, and you can see that I'm not even following best practices here because there were actually multiple relationships that we could have used for this thing. There were owners, operators, managers, whatever, right? Lots of different relationships that could have been. So we were just kind of flipping them around and trying different things. But it was good enough for what we were going to do for a prototype and a short you know, discussion about it. Along the way, as we were kind of asking, well, okay, if we, if we looked at this thing, 
would we want this other piece of data? Well, how could we get that other piece of data, right? What we actually discovered was there were reports that were available that were much better and easier than the way that they were getting the data currently. And so that took a big bite out of the problem that we thought existed, right? Because um, they were doing a lot of screen scraping for some of the data and other things like that as a precursor that we were loading in here. But we found there was a better, cleaner source of data. And this was the first, I'll call it an exploration board. <laughs> and we're looking at the data in a different way, right? It's not meant to be a dashboard. It's meant to be, how can we look at this data and slice and dice it uh, just to, to understand what's going on? So a lot of their goal is to look at a growing market where they go, okay, they're going to need more housing in that market. And then find some of the properties in particular that were underperforming. And I talked about their business model before, so that's what they're trying to do. And because they like to invest it within a certain uh, radius around a school and they have uh, some particular rent uh, targets that they, they kind of are comfortable with, right? They don't necessarily operate in $2,000 a month rent. They operate in, uh, in a narrower band than that. This made it easier to kind of uh, look at that. And ultimately we could drill down further than this we didn't need to build out those screens yet because I think by this time we were starting to go, hmm, I don't know if this is necessarily a Power BI thing. It might be more of an Excel thing, right? Uh, in Excel, you know, there's a lot of, of uh, anti-Excel when you've taken it too far, but there are things even within Excel, the Power Query part, for example, right, that can make even Excel a lot more uh, repeatable. And so that may be a better candidate for this. So uh, it, it, I'd say this experience prompted me a little bit because I've had different situations where it's like, hmm, is this gonna be a good fit for Power BI or maybe not, right? So I started to build out just a little bit of a, uh, of a framework for myself to, to gather up the snippets of, hmm, should we be building this in Power BI or not? And it's here, you're welcome to it and if you, uh, have had other similar experiences and and uh, want to connect on LinkedIn and help flesh this thing out a little bit, I would love that. So, uh, for example, when we started this conversation, I could kind of go, yeah, I like this problem. This is, this is a good strategic problem. It's got a lot of dollars associated with it. That's good. Um, it didn't seem very solved yet, right? So probably okay to, to proceed. And there were some that were kind of, but you can see they're sort of in the middle, right? If all the way to the left is, yeah, let's do this. Everything is pointing to Power BI and everything to the right is kind of like, probably not, right? Um, there were a lot in the middle. So as we discussed things and looked at that um, dashboard, and I would say, you know, the looking at it and the trying it out is an important piece of it. Some of these things I could have said up front, hey, I don't think this is gonna be the right fit, but that's different than taking them on a discovery journey of where it is and isn't the right fit and letting them help make that call, right? So. That's what we ended up doing. Um, we kind of found that some of the things that seemed a little bit more middle tended to slide to the right. And um, and so overall, it didn't feel like a good fit by the end. We still had a great experience together. It was a lot of fun. Um, we helped them learn really quickly about Power BI strengths and and uh, you know what might make a better project in the future. We freed up the client to focus on higher value problems, myself as well, and uh, it kind of prompted that iteration of, of that problem fit framework that I'll continue to use. So that was the gist of the project and there's my contact info and you can see my marketing assistant dog is pointing you to uh, LinkedIn as a good place to catch up with me. Ian, man, thanks so much. And <laughs> I, I can't help but saying it, I think this was my favorite presentation because this was so powerful. I mean, there's so much here. So I think we're so afraid of failure. And, and, and Charles and I have talked about this, right? Where, where we go in as consultants, sometimes we go in with our fears, but you don't realize that, that uh, you know, the, the client that we are trying to help or potential client, they have their own set of fears and, and we all kind of live there. And one of the big ones is fear of failure, right? Where, and, 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 Boy, I mean, what what a lesson here is that in a way this failed, right? I mean, this was a failed project, but I, I know I've 
experienced, learned it the hard way. Well, so the lesson that I've learned from life is that success is a pretty poor teacher. Whenever something works great, frankly, I don't, I never pause, I never reflect I, to absorb any lessons. Like, oh yeah, I am awesome. Look at me, right? And I just move right on. But man, when I fail, it makes me pause and reflect. And of course, if you choose not to beat yourself up, you choose not to go to the mall that, oh man, I suck. That's why I failed. If you step out of that, then you can learn your lesson. So in a way, this failed, but what a beautiful failure. And kudos to you on really living up to the wingman values, right? So wingman, I've always loved that term. I've also borrowed it <laughs> you know, and when I'm talking to clients or potential clients, because I love that so much is that, hey, we're, yeah, we're not, I'm not your Power BI guy. They're, yeah, I mean, there are others you can hire if that's what you want. I'm your wingman. I'm going to support you in your business and guide you to the right path, whether or not that has Power BI. So I must say, that's why I love hanging out with this group. Because we have people like uh, Ian, who's a better man than me, because I admit I have gone on, gone in to a lot of interactions with that Power BI hammer. <laughs> it's like, yep, you know, I'm going to hammer that nail down because that's all I know. So, hey, um, that is awesome. Um, uh, Ian, tell us, tell us a little bit more about the Wingman idea, specifically maybe tell us. Uh, about one of your existing clients whom you have worked and helped with the long term and how maybe the, uh, the relationship has evolved and grown and you've grown and you've uh, ended up helping maybe in, in different areas and what you never even thought about. Uh, yeah, tell us tell us a bit more about that with the wingman thing. Yeah. Uh, so one of the interesting things is that I think people that are at the top of an organization CEO or some C level, they lose a lot of visibility into what's going on in their organization, especially in fields like construction where things all happen out there, right? It's not happening in a manufacturing plant where you can kind of walk around and see a lot of it. It's happening all over the place. And once they get enough different projects going on, you couldn't drive to all of them in a day if you wanted to, let mm -hmm. alone a month or more. And so they really have to start to rely on data. So I'll give you an example. One of my clients is, uh, a, frankly, it was a friend from church and his brother is the CEO of a landscaping company, smaller than I would have thought I could really help, right? Mm -hmm. But they do somewhere between 500 and 1,000 projects a year. Wow. That seems to be a common theme of like, oh, there are enough projects that it really, you could start to lose track, right? Mm -hmm. And they were there and they would do things like, uh, yeah, I mentioned job profitability before, right? They would uh, figure out how profitable a job was usually a couple months after the job ended because that was Ooh. when they finally got all of everything together, Ouch. right? And it was great if they could do it within a week after, right? But now they kind of know every day, how's this project going? Now, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily know how the unforeseen stuff that's ahead, but you yeah. can get a pretty good sense of how it's going, not just that project, but in summary across all of them. And that's a that's a theme I would say for job profitability of any kind of construction, professional services kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, by doing that, I would say we got to know a lot about what was working, what divisions of their business were profitable or less so, where they needed to adjust yeah. pricing, you know, it just kind of goes on and on from there. If you've got this, like the the heart of a business is mm -hmm. some kind of repeatable thing that you can do again and again at profit, right? And so once you have a good sense of where those levels are, you can you can adjust. And yeah. So uh, for for them in particular, I started working with them a couple of years ago. They were about mm, two million dollars, and they are approaching five very quickly <laughs> now. And so they're Ooh. definitely on that like growth trajectory and a lot more visibility into what they're doing. And like I said, that was a uh, lot more smaller company than I yeah. imagined I could help. But that's such an incredible story, two million, five million. And hey, so it definitely helps to have a wingman on your side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not just when you're walking to a bar. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, great. Thank so um, talking, talking about failure, just one more question for you. Um, I was wondering if, 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 uh, like if you have, you have experienced something like that, where you, where you did fail 
in, in like your business or life or something that happened and you came out of that with, with a lesson? Yeah, um, there are a number of them. And actually, I think some of them relate closely enough to Power BI. I'll pick one of those, right? So mm -hmm. uh, for many years, my role in a more corporate job was around uh, product management and product director. And so you're often making business cases for, hey, I'd like a million dollars to build this piece of software or, or that, right? And and at the same time, there are all these problems that you really can't address with that approach. And so, you know, you find yourself kind of pigeonholing sometimes into, oh, well, this is either Excel or this is a uh, much larger project, right? Mm -hmm. That needs a team of developers. Yeah. And uh, before Power BI, Gosh, I, yeah. like I definitely had some where I was like, okay, I'm going to make a business case for this because it's the only way we're going to get it solved, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a million dollars. Was that the best spent million dollars? No. <laughs> you know, yeah. and you can look at some of those and uh, like year after year and I can look at some of them and go, man, that was, that didn't do yeah. what we were trying to do, right? Yeah. And so that's, I would say, one of the things that I really like about Power BI is it fits that middle space that's kind of in between and you can mm -hmm. make those... Uh, choices much more granularly right and much Love more it. quickly um, so so it ultimately was kind of what prompted me to not want to continue in that path of corporate it's big or it's excel uh, yeah a few years ago and go straight for this thing which is uh, has a lot more range to it i would say love it love it it's a beautiful story so folks you, you you heard about what a wingman can do for you so yeah if you if you are somebody in, you know that business needs a wingman you know who to call <laughs> all right folks so hey i wish zoom did this thing where we could end the broadcast and just hang out with the speakers um but unfortunately they don't let you do that but i just want to tell all the speakers that man I, I love you. This was awesome. And I think that's been the best part of my journey. As Frank said, it's been the people. And I feel so lucky and humbled to just be around all of you. And, and I'm always learning and you're always pushing me and challenging me um, and being my mirror and uh, yeah, making me a better person. And I hope uh, the others, the attendees can say the same, that they got at least one lesson out of it. So folks, um, uh, um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this as well. All right. All right, folks. So we'll sign off and we'll see you in our next Talk Power Bay event. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.